Hello friends, welcome to EPG Parshala. I am Dr. Sandeep Walia, Head of the Department, University Institute of Tourism and Hospitality Management, Chandigarh University. Today, we are going to discuss about the module Indian Paintings under the paper Tourism Products of India. Dear students, after completing this module, the students will be able to understand the concept of Indian paintings. They will also be able to understand the major themes of Indian paintings. The students will also be able to appreciate the historical lineage of Indian paintings. They will also be able to recognize Indian culture with diverse painting of India. Dear students, the tradition of painting has existed in the Indian subcontinent from ancient times, which stands as a testimony to the fact that the executive morals of Ajanta and Alora, Buddhist palm leaf manuscripts, Mughal and Kangra, school of miniature Indian paintings, etc. As a matter of fact, records have been uncovered that indicate the usage of paintings for decorating the doorways, guest rooms, etc. Some traditional Indian paintings like those of Ajanta, Bagh and Sitas Vatsal depict executive affection and reference for nature and its forces. For instance, the cave paintings of India date back to the prehistorical ages. The outstanding example of these paintings include the murals of Ajanta, Elora, Bagh, Sitinsval, etc. that reflect on prominence of naturalism. Ancient cave paintings of India serve as a window to the ancestry which used to dwell in the cages. Madhubani painting originated in a small village, Maithili in Bihar. In the beginning of the women folk in the village drew the paintings on the walls of their home, illustrating their thoughts, hopes and dreams. However, with time the painting started to become a part of festivities and important events like marriages, a diverse range of Indian paintings have been discussed in the following segment. Let us discuss about the most important themes. The first one is the miniature painting. Miniature paintings involve striking handmade paintings which are although colorful however are smaller in size. The highlight of such paintings is the presence of refined and subtle bushwork lending the renowned identity. Colors are obtained from minerals, vegetables, stones, indigo and often gold. Regular themes of such paintings encompasses the rangas or otherwise the musical chords in classical music. Some schools in the Indian comprised Mughals, Rajputs and the Deccan. The evolution and growth of miniature paintings occurred in the western Himalayas in 17th century. Miniature paintings took inspirations from the mural paintings. The art flourished and reached prominence during the regimes of the Mughals. Mughals also introduced the touch of Persian customs in the Indian miniature paintings. The Mughals are also credited for the western influence that came into being in this miniature art. Text written under ages of Pala rulers in eastern parts of the country along with the text of Jains in the western part of India mark the earliest examples of miniature paintings in Indian subcontinent which dates back to 11th and 12th centuries. It should be noted that Buddhism as a religion reached its prominence during Pala dynasty and was home to the most renowned centers of Buddhist learning centers like Nalanda, Vikramshila, Odantapuri and Somapura. There used to be the workshops on casting of bronze images with a confluence of numerous scholars and pilgrims in these centers. Thus the visitors used to take back the manuscripts of Buddhism and bronze works 
to countries of Nepal, Sri Lanka, Tibet and others. To some of the important schools of Indian miniature paintings includes Pala School, Orissa School, the third one is the Jain School, then there was Mughal School, the other one is the Rajasthani School, the next is Nepali School. Let us now discuss about Mughal painting. Mughal painting couldn't essentially reflect the combination of Indian, Persian and Islamic graces. These paintings evolved between 16th to 19th centuries when India was ruled by the Mughal emperors. The themes that dominated Mughal paintings included battles, court sites, legendary fables, hunting vistas, wildlife etc. In current times, museums such as the Victoria and the Albert in London hold an executive assortment of these paintings. Although this art form continued with the support of several other patrons, yet gradually a declining trend began to set in. Especially during the resign of Shah Alam II, the art had almost lost its appeal and was handling to complete extinction. During this period, however, another school of painting, that is the Rajput paintings, initiated to evolve and grow in popularity. The inception of the Mughal school of painting is termed as an essential landmark in the history of paintings in India. With the advent of the Mughal Empire, the school of painting came into being during the ruler of Emperor Akbar in 1560. Akbar was profoundly interested in paintings and architecture. As a boy, he used to take lessons in drawing under two Persian masters, namely Mir Sayyid Ali and Abdul Samad Khan. This art form, this art form was established. These artists were originally employed by Emperor Akbar's father Himayu. In this way, a number of artists in India were then recruited from length and breadth of the country to learn and work under the two Persian masters. The surge and evolution of the Mughal style is credited to the connective synthesis between native Indian painting style with the Safavid school of Persian painting. This style is characterized by agile naturalism which is based on the close observation of the nature and results in refined and delicate paintings. It is considered as among the paintings that hold unique distinction in aesthetics and primarily represents artistocratic and secular styles. It is believed that illustration of manuscript of the Tutinama that is showcased in Cleveland Museum in the United States of America is the first work of the Mughal school. The painting style reflected in that manuscript exhibits the formative stages of the Mughal style, which was suppressed by the ambitious project in the form of Hamza Nama illustration on cloth in between 1564 to 69 AD, which originally contained 1400 leaves in 17 volumes. The style is termed as more developed and sophisticated than that of the predecessor. Tutinama. Next one is the Mysore painting. Mysore painting reflects the classical South Indian painting style, which evolved in the Mysore city of Karnataka. With the support of Vodiyas, Mysore school of paintings reached its pinnacle. Alike Tanjore paintings, Mysore painting incorporate thinner gold leaves and require more intricate work. Hindu gods and goddesses, also the scenes from rich Hindu mythology, form the most prominent themes of Mysore paintings. The enzymatic beauty and intricacy of Mysore paintings leave the beholders spellbound and mesmerized. Besides Mysore, this school of painting also found in Bangalore, Nara Sipura, Sarvagan Bengala, Najangud and Tumku. In more traditional paintings, most of the inputs that went in the creation of Mysore paintings included brushes, paints, board, gold file and many more. However, it was different than the modern ways and instead of poster and watercolors, vegetable and mineral coloring agents were utilized. Moreover, the traditional form employed paper, wood and cloth instead of cartridge paper base as frequently used now. The sketches were drawn with the aid of charcoal that used to be prepared by burning twigs of tamarind and in iron tubes. To give paintings its true shape, the instruments such as the brushes 
were formed with several materials including squirrel goat or camel hair. Pahari painting. Pahari painting is the name given to the paintings made in hilly states of Himachal Pradesh and Jammu and Kashmir. These paintings developed and flourished during the period of 17th to 19th century. Pahari paintings are mostly created in miniature forms and have been significantly influenced by the Rajput style of paintings. This similarity can be traced back to the family relations that were and an gedart between Pahari rulers and royal court of, in Rajasthan. Another traces to influence can also be noted from the Gujarat and Deccan paintings. With the emergence of Bhakti movement, newer themes in Pahari paintings started to emerge. For instance, the Shavya Shakta themselves were complemented by Argot poetry and folk songs in the praise of Lord Krishna and Rama. Consequently, the themes of the paintings thus revolved around the love and devotion. Along with, along with such themes, illustrations from epics like Puranas were also popular. One mention should be of Pahari paintings pertains to the year 1552 which reflected Devi Mahatmaya was the painted at Kangra is a renowned piece of Pahari art. 17th to nearly the middle of the 19th century. Two categories of Indian Pahari paintings include Masoli and Kulu style, Guler and Kangra style. Let us discuss about Basoli paintings. These paintings are characteristic of the town Basoli, which is located on the banks of the river Ravi in the state of Himachal Pradesh. Basoli paintings has depicted on the art form of impressive Devi series, also the series that comprise of the manifestations of the highest revered goddess. In addition to that, the subtle portrayal of the Rasa Manjuri text is a typical feature of Basoli paintings, which was painted under the patronage of rural Kripal Pal by an artist named Devi Dasa. It also believed that Gita Govinda had its roots in Basoli. Another feature of Basoli paintings entailed geometric design with a tinge of brighter colors and glossed enamel that make this art for so executive. Then the second one is the Guler Kangra style paintings. The origin of Guler Kangra style of paintings can be traced back to 1800s in Himachal Pradesh. The pictorial features depict that more naturalized version of other paintings which are visible differences as to how eyes are treated and faces are modeled. The commonly used backdrop themes included in Guler Kangra style paintings were the picturesque landscapes. Along with that, this style has also accentuated the elegance and grace of the Indian woman. The next one is the Rajput painting. As the name suggests, the Rajput painting finds its origin in the state of Rajasthan, somewhere around the late 16th and early 17th century. During this period, the Mughals were the most prominent rulers of this princely state and due to that, most of the schools of Rajput painting in India exhibit vital Mughal influence. Each of the Rajput kingdoms evolved a distinctive style, yet subtle similarities and common themes can still be noticed in the paintings from different territories. One can also observe that the dominance of Chora Panchisika group style in Indian Rajasthani paintings. The main themes around which Rajasthani paintings of India revolved include the great epics of the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, the life of Lord Krishna, landscapes and humans. Rajput painting of India were also done on the walls of palaces, inner chambers of the forts, havelis, etc. Colors used for the painting were derived from minerals, plant sources, conch shells, precious stones, gold and silver, etc. As against the Mughal paintings that were primarily secular, the art of painting in Rajasthani are deeply influenced by the Indian traditions and gained inspiration from epics, religious texts of India like the Puranas, Sanskrit poems, also various Indian languages, also the folklore of India and works related to the musical themes. The cults of Vaishwanism, Vesh Shaivism placed remarkable influence on the pictorial art of these places. One such of these was the cult of Krishna, which was very well known and patronized by then rulers and artists. The themes from the Ramayana, Bhagavad Gita, Shiva Purana, Mahabharata, 
गीता गोविंदा रसा मंजारी अमारु सताका रसिक कपरिया ऑफ किसा वदवासा एंड मेनी मोर एपिक्स प्रोवाइडेड समटस इनपुट्स टू द पेंटर्स हु देयर स्किल्स एंड डिवोशंस मेड अ नोटेबल कंट्रीब्यूशन इन द ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ दिस फॉर्म ऑफ इंडियन पेंटिंग्स स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द 16th सेंचुरी व्हेन द राजपूत पेंटिंग ओरिजिनेटेड न्यूमरस स्कूल्स इमर्ज्ड एंड दैट इंक्लूडेड बीकानेर स्कूल बूंदी कोटा कलम स्कूल द थर्ड वन वाज द जयपुर स्कूल द फोर्थ वन वाज द किशनगढ़ स्कूल द नेक्स्ट वाज द मारवाड स्कूल देन देयर वाज मेवार स्कूल आल्सो देन देयर वाज रागमाला स्कूल द नेक्स्ट वन वाज अंबर एंड जयपुर एज मेंशनड अर्लियर द पेंटिंग्स ऑफ अंबर एंड जयपुर एग्जिबिट स्ट्रांगर मुगल इन्फ्लुएंस However at the same time the bold compositions and use of abstractions reflect regional characteristics episodic compositions from the life of lord krishna used to be the prominent themes of these paintings during 18th and early 19th century in addition to that other noteworthy themes included ragmala and devotional subjects during the 19th century the next one is the bikaner Akin to the earlier school of Rajput paintings, Bikaneri paintings too showed stronger influence of Mughal traditions. In addition to Mughal themes, the paintings of Bikaner also reflect influence of Deccan paintings. During the late 18th century, the city started showing conservative Rajput style with smoothness and abstractions. However, they typically lacked excessive pomp and flashiness. The next one is the Bundi It was 16th century when Rajput painting started to surface in Bundi which too reflected heavy Mughal influence some examples of Bundi paintings can be noticed from the period of Rao Ratan Singh at the time of ruler Rao Chhatrasal and Bhav Singh the art form gained greater emphasis and entailed court scenes as regular themes in addition other themes comprised of abstracts based on the lives of nobles and ladies then the next one is the kota the art form from kota appear natural and depict calligraphic work in the way they are performed use of vibrant color themes coupled with bold lines were a usual feature during the ruler of the king jagat singh later on with the advent of the region of arjun singh the painting started to reflect males adorned with longer hooked nose in the intricacies of paintings during 18th century common themes that characterized this art form included hunting scenes and ragmalas further later king ram singh too added the portrayal of themes embellished with devotion hunting and court rooms along with the royal possessions in paintings the next one is the kishangarh this art form represented a perfect blend of mughal and regional styles with the themes adorned with the reflections of the love tales between krishna and radha other popular themes in kishangarh paintings consisted of the poetry of savant singh shahnama and court scenes etc this school is well known for its bani thani paintings however unfortunately though the art form showed a decline and the once achieved glory reached all time low with the demise of king savant singh and his leading painters the next one was the malwa known to be as among the most conservative rajput painting schools of the 17th century malwa was highly influenced by chor panchasika style the emphasis was laid on strong colors and bold lines at times one could notice a remote mughal influence on malwa paintings The next one is the Marwar. The earliest documented paintings of Marwar paintings within the realm of Rajasthani paintings of remains that of Ragmala which was painted in Pali in 1623. In the 17th century the most common themes such as the portraits of nobles moving on the royal horses and executive court room scenes characterized the Marwar paintings. Dalchand A prominent artist is credited to have brought the Mughal touch in the Marwar style of paintings. Then the next one is the Mewar. 
as against other schools of Rajasthan paintings. This school attempted to elevate the influence of Mughal styles and focused on more its conservative style. Earliest case of pattern of Merwar painting is the King Chavanand Ragmala who maintained the conservative art form in 1605. One can observe heavy similarity between Meva style with the Chora Panchika style, particularly the flatness, use of brighter colors and motifs. By the end of 17th century and the early 18th century, this style of paintings witnessed the wave of revival. However, late 18th century again saw a decline. The Meva style of paintings, however, continued as a court art in the mid-19th and the mid-20th century. The next one is the Tanjore painting. Tanjore painting is among the most popular classical South Indian school of painting and is indigenous to the Tanjore, or sometimes referred to as Tanjore, the South Indian state of Tamil Nadu. The distinguished factor in Tanjore paintings that gives it a unique identity among the other painting styles is the presence of surface richness and vivacious combination of colors. Along with this, the adornments consisting of semi-precious stones, pearls and the glass pieces further enhance the appeal of the Tanjore paintings. The three-dimensional effect comes from the relief work given to these paintings. Tanjore painting initiated during the period of 16th century where it found patronage by the Chola kings. Beside Cholas, other dynasties including Marathas and Nayakas of Tanjore and Trichy along with the Naidus of Madurai too supported Tanjore painting from the 16th to 18th century. The popular themes of Tanjore painting entail Hindu gods, goddesses, saints and hermits. These paintings are characterized by the centrality given to the main figures which lie in the center of the paintings. Tanjore paintings are usually carried out on wooden planks which are known as Palagai Padam. If the word is broken then the meaning becomes clearer where Palagai means wooden plank and Padam means picture. The painting goes through several steps of which first step involves drawing of the primary sketch of the image on the base. The base is composed of a cloth that is pasted on a wooden base. In the second step, chalk powder of zinc oxide is mixed with water soluble adhesive which is then applied on the base. Afterwards, the drawing is done and embellishments of cut glass, pearls and semi-precious stones, laces and threads are pasted on the painting. For further ornamentation, water thin sheets of gold may be pasted in relief on the certain parts of the paintings while bright colors are maintained in the other parts of the Tanjore paintings. Let us now discuss about the West Indian school. Regions of Gujarat, Rajasthan and Malwa witnessed the prevalence of ex and expansion of the Western Indian style of painting. Akin to the grown of Buddhist art form during Pala's Western art flourish under the ages of Jainism. The religion gained prominence in the design of Chalakyas in Gujarat and Rajasthan till the end of the 13th century. From the 12th to 16th centuries, numerous Jain manuscripts got commissioned and behind such a development were the rich merchants, rulers and ministers who also earned religious superiority. Such scholarly works are preserved in Jain libraries till today. The paintings based on these manuscripts reflect peculiar distortions where certain anatomical features are enlarged. For example, the common feature of figures depicted had protruding eyes with embedded colors. Two Jain texts that were commonly reproduced in the form of paintings including Kalp Sutra and Kalacharya Katha. Then the next one is the Deccan school. The Deccan region represents the plateau region in South India lying between the Narmada and the Krishna rivers. Although it is believed that before Mughal painting, there wasn't any such art form existed before the region of Deccan. However, it can be safely be acknowledged that sophisticated school or painting thrived there, thus placed a significant influence to the evolution of Mughal style in northern parts of India. During 16th and 17th centuries, the early centers of painting in the Deccan were Ahmednagar, 
Bijapur and Golconda. In 17th and 18th centuries, the works were prominently influenced by the Mughal styles but continued to develop independently. Style followed in the Deccan school of painting style is increasingly perceptive and integrate a native of foreign art forms. For instance, the Vijayanagar paintings are characterized by the lengthened features, figures with floral backgrounds and a Persian influence is visible in the landscapes used in the paintings. The colors used are rich and radiant with a substantial use of golden and white colors. For the most part, the color themes represented Islamic, Turkish and Persian traditions. Dear students, let us summarize. Paintings depicts about the glorious history and past of any country, a nation or establishment. One can also know about their clan or about the human settlements with the help of paintings. The paintings are also a major tourism product as they depict a lot about the history, architecture, dresses and dance forms of the ancient era and attracts a lot of painting lover tourists who are interested in researching about the ancient settlements. And with these words, I sum up this module. Thank you.